in the ancient kingdom of Iolcus, where the grandeur of marble palaces met the untamed beauty of the Thessalian landscape, the threads of destiny were intricately woven. It was a time when the gods held sway over the affairs of mortals, and the heroes of Greece embarked on legendary quests. The story begins with Aeson, the rightful heir to the throne of Iolcus, and Peleus, his envious stepbrother. Aeson was a noble and just ruler, beloved by his people, but his brother Peleus harbored ambitions of power that knew no bounds. When the aging king of Iolcus passed away, Peleus seized the throne through treachery, imprisoning his half-brother Aeson to ensure his grip on power remained unchallenged. Unbeknownst to Peleus, Aeson's wife had given birth to a son named Jason, whose destiny would be intertwined with the fate of the kingdom. Fearing for the child's life, Aeson's wife entrusted their son to the care of Chiron, the wise centaur. For two decades, Chiron nurtured and educated Jason in the ways of both mortals and immortals, instilling in him the virtues of courage, wisdom, and honor. As Jason grew into a remarkable young man, he remained unaware of his true lineage and the tragic fate that had befallen his father and kingdom. His upbringing by Chiron had forged in him a unique character, a blend of mortal and divine qualities. Jason's destiny was to be a hero of great renown, but the circumstances of his birth had kept this fate hidden from him. Walking along the banks of a meandering river, Jason came upon a sight that would change the course of his day. An elderly woman, her form bent with age, stood at the water's edge. Her attire was humble, her demeanor seemingly frail. However, appearances can be deceiving. This old woman was none other than Queen Hera, wife of Zeus, and a powerful deity in her own right. Hera had chosen to take on the guise of a mortal to test the character and compassion of Jason, whose destiny had already been entwined with the gods. Jason, in his innate kindness and respect for others, approached the woman with a genuine desire to help. He offered his hand to assist her in crossing the river, displaying the virtues that had been cultivated during his upbringing by Chiron. As they made their way across the river, a pivotal moment occurred. Jason's sandal, unbeknownst to him, slipped from his foot and disappeared beneath the rushing waters. This seemingly trivial event, a mere quirk of fate, would later take on profound significance in his journey. Queen Hera, her divine nature hidden until this moment, revealed her true identity to Jason. She commended him for his kindness and the compassion he had shown to a stranger. Hera, who watched over the affairs of mortals and heroes, pledged her favor and protection to the young man. It was a promise that would prove invaluable in the trials and tribulations that lay ahead. King Peleus had imposed a dark cloud of tyranny over the land, and unbeknownst to him, a true heir to the throne lived in the shadows. Nurtured by the wise centaur Chiron, this hidden heir was Jason, and his destiny was intricately woven with the fate of Iolcus. Peleus, driven by jealousy and paranoia, had become aware of the existence of his nephew Jason and the potential threat he posed to his rule. In an attempt to rid himself of this perceived danger, Elias devised a treacherous plan. He knew of a prophecy that foretold his downfall at the hands of a man wearing only one sandal. Elias decided to exploit this prophecy. He summoned Jason to the palace, revealing his knowledge of the prophecy and the circumstances of Jason's birth. Peleus then set forth an impossible task before Jason, one that he believed would be the hero's doom. The task was to retrieve the fabled Golden Fleece, a symbol of kingship and divine favor. This treasure was said to be located in a distant and perilous land known as Colchis, ruled by the powerful King Aetes. The Golden Fleece was guarded zealously by a sleepless dragon, and its acquisition seemed impossible. Peleus believed that by sending Jason on this quest he would either be killed in the process or forever lost in the distant lands, removing the threat he posed. But Jason had qualities that set him apart from ordinary mortals. His upbringing by Chiron had instilled in him not only physical prowess, but also unshakable determination and the will to overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. He accepted the quest, unaware of the trials that awaited him, but driven by a burning desire to reclaim his rightful place as the heir to Iolcus. Jason's acceptance of the quest to retrieve the Golden Fleece marked the beginning of a grand and perilous adventure. He was not alone in this endeavor. 
The heroic age of Greece was filled with legendary figures, and he would call upon their aid to form a fellowship of heroes known as the Argonauts. To build a vessel worthy of this epic journey, Jason sought the expertise of Argos, the master shipbuilder. With divine guidance from the goddess Athena herself, Argos constructed the magnificent ship, the Argo. The Argo was not an ordinary vessel. It was a marvel of craftsmanship, adorned with a prophetic piece of timber from Zeus's sacred grove. It was a ship destined for great feats and held a special place in the hearts of all who would sail upon it. With the Argo as their vessel, Jason embarked on a quest to assemble a crew of Greece's greatest heroes and warriors. Many of them were legends in their own right. Among the crew were Heracles, the most renowned hero of ancient Greece. Heracles brought unmatched strength and courage to the crew. His twelve labors were legendary, and his presence was both a blessing and a challenge to the Argonauts, for his strength often had to be tempered by wisdom. Orpheus, a gifted musician and poet, Orpheus possessed a lyre that could soothe even the most savage of beasts and tame the wildest of seas. His melodies were a source of solace and strength to the Argonauts during their arduous journey. Atalanta, a skilled huntress, Atalanta was known for her speed and precision with the bow. Her presence among the Argonauts added grace and agility to their ranks. Castor and Pollux, twins known as the Dioscuri, Castor was a master horseman, while Pollux was a formidable boxer. Their bond was inseparable, and their combined skills made them indispensable. Telamon, renowned for his great size and strength, Telamon was a warrior without peer. His imposing presence served as a source of inspiration and intimidation to their adversaries. Maleager, a hero famed for his role in the Caledonian boar hunt, Maleager's strength and valor made him an integral member of the crew. He was also known for his role in the tragic story of the Meliagros and the Melagrids. Peleus, the father of Achilles, Peleus was a respected warrior and leader in his own right. His wisdom and experience brought valuable guidance to the Argonauts. Argos, the master shipbuilder who constructed the Argo, Argos's craftsmanship was vital to the success of their voyage. The Argo itself was a masterpiece, featuring a prophecy-laden piece of timber from Zeus's sacred grove on its prow. Augeas, king of Elis and a skilled diplomat, Augeas's ability to negotiate and form alliances with other kingdoms would prove invaluable during their quest. Polyphemus, not to be confused with the one-eyed Cyclops who was the adversary of Odysseus. Polyphemus was considered to be one of the strongest men to ever be born. Zeus and Kale, sons of the North Wind, Boreas. Zeus and Kale possessed wings and could fly. Their agility and swiftness in the air would prove advantageous in the face of various challenges. And many others, such as Idmon, the seer, and Typhus, the helmsman. The assembly of this heroic band became known as the Argonauts, named after their ship, the Argo. They were bound by a common purpose, to aid Jason in his quest for the Golden Fleece. Each member brought their own strengths and skills to the expedition, making the crew a formidable force. As they set sail from Iolcus, the hero and his companions were filled with a sense of anticipation and destiny. Their journey was not without its challenges from the very beginning. The sea itself, a vast and unpredictable expanse, tested their seamanship and resolve. The Argonauts faced fierce storms, powerful currents, and the capricious moods of the god of the sea, Poseidon. Yet, with unity and determination, they weathered these trials, for they were bound by a shared purpose and the camaraderie of heroes. Their first notable stop on this grand odyssey was the mysterious island of Lemnos. As they approached its shores, the Argonauts were met with an eerie silence. Lemnos was said to be inhabited solely by women who, driven by their grievances, had murdered their husbands. Queen Hypsipyle, the only exception, reigned as the island's ruler. Despite the island's ominous reputation, Queen Hypsipyle welcomed the Argonauts with open arms. Her kingdom's predicament had led her to see the arrival of these brave heroes as a welcome opportunity. The women of Lemnos sought strong men to ensure the survival of their society, both in times of peace and in the face of potential threats. The Argonauts were offered hospitality and respite from their arduous journey. They saw firsthand the strange and isolated life of the Lemnian women, who had managed to establish a society free from male domination. It was a unique experience for the heroes, 
and they treated their hosts with respect and dignity. During their stay, Jason and the Argonauts and shared beds with the women of Lemnos. Jason in particular laid with Queen Hypsipyle, and her son Eunius is said to be born from this union. These heroes, whose lives were often filled with perilous adventures and epic battles, found a moment of respite on this island. It was a brief interlude of peace before they would once again set sail into the unknown, but it left an indelible mark on their journey. Leaving the shores of Lemnos behind, the Argonauts continued their voyage on the Argo. Their next destination brought them to the island of the Mount of Bears, ruled by King Sisychus of the Dolionis. Initially, their arrival seemed peaceful, as King Sisychus extended a friendly welcome to the heroes. The hospitable king filled their ship with wine and food, and shared with them a safe passage through the seas. However, fate took a cruel turn as the Argonauts encountered a bizarre and unexpected challenge on this island. Six armed monsters known as Gegenes suddenly attacked them. These fearsome creatures were unlike anything the heroes had ever faced. With their multiple arms, they were formidable adversaries, and the ensuing battle was fierce and chaotic. With help of the formidable Heracles, the Argonauts were able to repel the attack and sailed forward. However, as night fell, the winds pushed the Argo back towards the island. The Doliones did not recognize them and launched an attack, believing the heroes to be new invaders. This misunderstanding led to conflict between the heroes and the Doliones. As a result, many Doliones champions were slain, including King Sisychus himself. At the break of dawn, they realized their error, and a funeral was arranged to mourn the fallen comrades for three days and three nights. As the Argo sailed on, the heroes faced yet another challenge, this time involving one of their own, Heracles. Known for his incredible strength and courage, Heracles was an integral part of the Argonauts' crew. However, his absence from the ship presented a new set of challenges. During a stop in Mycia, Heracles left the Argo in search of a replacement oar. It was a seemingly routine task, but fate had other plans. As he ventured into the wilderness, his comrade Hylas, renowned for his exceptional beauty, was lured away by a water nymph who had become enamored with him. Heracles, upon returning to the ship and discovering Hylas was missing, was consumed by grief and anger. He set off in a fit of rage, vowing to find his friend at any cost. This unexpected turn of events tested the unity of the Argonauts and led to Heracles' eventual departure from their journey. The loss of Heracles was deeply felt by the crew, but despite the challenges and losses they endured, the Argonauts pressed onward, knowing that their greatest trials were yet to come. The Argonauts' journey brought them to the land of the Beabritians, where they encountered an unusual and challenging trial. This land was ruled by King Amicus, a formidable boxer known for his extraordinary strength and combat skills. King Amicus had a peculiar tradition. He challenged all newcomers to a deadly bout. This brutal custom was a test of strength and courage, and Amicus relished the opportunity to prove his dominance. When the Argonauts arrived on the shores of Babricia, King Amicus wasted no time in issuing his challenge. He taunted the heroes, daring them to face him in the boxing ring. Pollux, one of the Dioscuri twins and renowned for his own combat prowess, accepted Amicus's challenge on behalf of the Argonauts. The boxing match that followed was nothing short of epic. Pollux and King Amicus engaged in a brutal contest of strength, endurance, and skill. The battle raged on, with neither warrior giving an inch. The outcome of this match held not only the fate of the Argonauts, but also the honor of the Babricians and their king. In the end, Pollux emerged victorious, defeating King Amicus in a hard-fought battle. As Amicus fell to the ground, lifeless, the Babricians rushed at Pollux. The Argonauts intervened, and a great battle ensued. Eventually, the Berbicians were forced to retreat, and the Argonauts continued on their journey. The Argonauts continued their journey across the vast seas. Their next destination brought them to the realm of Phineas, a blind prophet who was tormented by a relentless and terrifying scourge, the Harpies. The Harpies were mythical creatures with the bodies of birds and the faces of women. They were notorious for their insatiable hunger, and their habit of swooping down to steal Phineas's food, leaving him in perpetual starvation. 
The Argonauts could not stand idly by while witnessing this cruelty inflicted upon the blind seer. With their noble intentions and the guidance of Phineas, the Argonauts devised a cunning plan to confront the Harpies. They set up a feast, tempting the creatures with a sumptuous banquet. As the Harpies descended to claim their stolen meal, the heroes sprang into action, brandishing their weapons and driving the vile creatures away. Zetes and Calais chased the Harpies to a faraway land where they would never bother Phineas again. The Argonauts celebrated with a grand feast where Phineas offered his prophetic guidance to the heroes. As the Argonauts continued their perilous journey in pursuit of the Golden Fleece, they encountered yet another formidable obstacle known as the Simplegades, or the Clashing Rocks. These enormous rocks posed a grave danger to any ship attempting to pass through the narrow strait they guarded. The Simplegades were not ordinary rocks. They possessed a magical and treacherous nature. These massive stone formations had the peculiar habit of smashing together whenever a ship tried to navigate between them. Many brave sailors and adventurers had met their doom as they were crushed between the merciless rocks. Fortunately for the Argonauts, they had received valuable guidance from Phineas. He advised them on how to navigate the clashing rocks safely and provided them with a critical piece of advice. They should release a dove to fly ahead of the Argo. If the dove made it through the strait unscathed, it would signal a safe passage for the ship. However, if the dove was caught and crushed, the Argonauts would know to avoid the perilous path. Following Phineas's guidance, the Argonauts cautiously approached the clashing rocks. With bated breath, they released the dove, which darted through the narrow passage. Miraculously, the dove managed to pass between the rocks just before they slammed shut, losing only a few feathers in the process. This narrow escape revealed the path to safety for the Argo. The Argonauts skillfully steered their ship through the treacherous strait, narrowly avoiding the devastating fate that had befallen so many others. As they sailed farther from familiar waters and deeper into the unknown, they faced numerous trials and mishaps near the edge of the world. One such trial was the loss of their seer Idmon, who was slain by a tusk of a wild boar. Despite foreseeing these events, Idmon still chose to assist Jason on his quest for the Golden Fleece. On the island of Ares, the Argonauts encountered the Stymphalian birds whose feathers were like steel arrows. The Argonauts knit their shields and spears above their heads and made such a noise that they scared the birds into the mountains on the opposite shore. Additionally, the Argonauts rescued four shipwrecked brothers who sought refuge on their ship. These brothers, known as the Doliones, joined the crew in their quest for the Golden Fleece. These trials served to strengthen their resolve and prepare them for the even greater challenges that awaited them as they drew closer to their ultimate destination. Having arrived in the kingdom of Colchis, Jason faced the formidable task of obtaining the coveted Golden Fleece from King Aetes. The fleece was no ordinary prize. It was the shimmering pelt of a magical ram that possessed the power of flight and had been sacrificed to the gods. Jason knew that securing the Golden Fleece would be no easy feat, as it was heavily guarded by the Colchian king. However, he was determined to achieve his goal and prove his worthiness to claim the throne of Iolcus. In Colchis, Jason adopted a diplomatic approach rather than resorting to force. He presented himself to King Aietes and openly declared his intention to retrieve the Golden Fleece, explaining that it was his rightful inheritance. The audacity of his request shocked the king, but Eats, crafty and cunning, agreed to give Jason a chance, albeit an impossible one. Aetes devised a task he believed would be Jason's undoing. He was to harness a pair of fire-breathing bulls and use them to plow a field and then sowing it with dragon's teeth. These teeth, when planted, would give rise to a battalion of fierce armed warriors. It was a task designed for failure, but Jason was undeterred. As Jason faced the seemingly insurmountable challenge set by King Aetes, the divine intervention of Hera and Athena played a pivotal role in his success. The goddesses orchestrated a plan that involved the goddess of love, Aphrodite, and her mischievous son Eros to further Jason's cause. Aphrodite used her enchanting powers to make Aetes' daughter Medea fall deeply in love with Jason. Medea was not just any princess. She was a sorceress of great power and knowledge and her affections for Jason set the stage for their future collaboration. 
Medea's love for Jason was genuine, and she saw in him a chance for escape from her father's oppressive rule. She recognized his bravery and the righteousness of his cause. Medea would prove to be an invaluable ally, not only for her magical abilities but also for her wisdom and cunning. Their love story, born out of divine intervention, would become a cornerstone of the Argonaut's quest. Medea's unwavering support and her ability to provide powerful enchantments and potions would prove crucial as Jason faced the deadly challenges set by King Aeetes on his quest for the Golden Fleece. With the favor of Medea, King Aeetes' daughter, and the protection of the goddesses Hera and Athena, Jason embarked on the first of the formidable tasks set by Aeetes to obtain the Golden Fleece. His initial trial involved harnessing the fire-breathing bulls of Aeetes to plow a field and sow it with dragon's teeth. The outcome of this challenge was crucial, as failure meant certain death. The fire-breathing bulls were a fearsome sight, their fiery breath capable of incinerating anything in their path. As Jason approached the massive beasts, their roars filled the air and flames shot from their mouths. It was a perilous moment that would test not only Jason's bravery but also his resourcefulness. Medea, deeply in love with Jason and determined to help him succeed, provided him with powerful charms and potions. These magical aids offered him protection against the flames and allowed him to approach the bulls unscathed. With great skill and determination, Jason managed to yoke the bulls to a plow and set about taming them. The act of plowing the field was no ordinary task either, as it had to be done with precision and speed. Jason, guided by Medea's magic, accomplished this feat efficiently, creating furrows in the earth and sowing dragon's teeth as required. It was a testament to his courage and resourcefulness, but the true challenge awaited as the dragon's teeth began to sprout. Having successfully harnessed the fire-breathing oxen, Jason faced the next daunting task on his quest for the Golden Fleece, sowing the dragon's teeth in the sacred field of Ares. Medea provided Jason with a magical charm or incantation that would give him an advantage when the dragon's teeth began to sprout. Armed with this magical aid, Jason ventured into the sacred field, prepared for the unexpected. As he sowed the dragon's teeth into the fertile soil, the earth quivered and rumbled. Soon the teeth began to stir and crack open, and from the furrows, fully armored warriors emerged. These were the Spartoi, born from the earth itself, and they were ready to attack the intruder in their midst. Jason, with the magical charm Medea had provided, tossed a stone in the midst of the warriors. This caused confusion and discord among the Spartoi, and they turned on each other, believing that they had been betrayed by one of their own. As the battle raged on, Jason and his comrades took advantage of the situation and fought valiantly against the relentless undead warriors. It was a harrowing and surreal conflict as they clashed with foes that lacked flesh and blood but possessed deadly determination. Through sheer bravery, skill, and the power of Medea's magic, Jason and his crew managed to defeat the skeleton warriors. Despite their victory, King Aeetes had no intention of parting with the Golden Fleece. He planned on leading the men of Colchis to kill Jason and the Argonauts during the night. Medea, fearing the death of Jason, fled from her father to join the Argonauts. She led them to safety and towards the sacred oak tree where the Golden Fleece resided. As Jason and the Argonauts drew closer to the Golden Fleece, they faced their most formidable challenge yet, the guardian dragon that protected the treasure in Colchis. The Colchian dragon was unlike any creature they had encountered on their journey. It was a massive serpentine beast with scales that shimmered like burnished bronze. What made this dragon especially fearsome was that it never slept, maintaining a constant vigil over the coveted fleece. To confront this formidable foe, Jason once again relied on the wisdom and magical abilities of his ally Medea. Medea had been instrumental in helping him overcome previous challenges and this task was no exception. She provided Jason with a potion, brewed from rare and potent herbs, that would grant him temporary invulnerability against the dragon's fiery breath and allow him to approach the fleece without harm. However, during the midst of battle, the charms faded and Jason was swallowed whole by the dragon. Medea used her magic to lull the dragon, relaxing its body and putting it into a deep slumber. Without any resistance, 
Jason emerged from the belly of the dragon unscathed and retrieved the Golden Fleece. With the Golden Fleece in his possession, Jason and the Argonauts made a hasty departure from Colchis. The Fleece, made from the glistening golden wool of the magical ram that had carried Phrixus and Hela to safety, was a symbol of not only their success, but also the divine favor that had guided their quest. As the Argo sailed away from the Colchian shore, news of their daring heist spread like wildfire. King Aetes, upon discovering the theft of the Golden Fleece, was consumed by rage and a burning desire for revenge. He wasted no time in assembling his fleet to pursue the Argonauts, determined to reclaim the stolen treasure at any cost. With the coveted Golden Fleece in their possession, the Argonauts embarked on their perilous journey homeward, leaving Colchis behind. Their voyage, however, was far from smooth, and they faced numerous challenges and dangers along the way. The first obstacle they encountered was the wrath of King Aetes, who pursued them with a fleet of Colchian ships. Aetes was determined to recapture the Golden Fleece and punish Jason and his crew for their audacious theft. During this pursuit, they clashed with Medea's brother, Absurtus. With the help of Medea, the Argonauts emerged victorious. But this victory came at a cost. Medea dismembered the body of the defeated Absurtus and threw it into the sea in an effort to slow down her father. King Aetes, enraged at this sight, had no choice but to retrieve the body of his son, while the Argonauts sailed into the distance. This heinous crime brought upon vast and unpredictable storms as the Argo sailed into the Black Sea. Poseidon, the god of the sea, seemed intent on testing their resolve, sending fierce storms, turbulent currents, and towering waves to challenge the Argonauts. As the Argonauts continued their journey, they found themselves in unfamiliar waters, navigating toward an island shrouded in mist. To redeem themselves, after committing a heinous crime, Jason and Medea had no choice by the stop at the island of Aea. This island was the home of the Enchantress Circe, a powerful and beguiling sorceress known for her ability to transform men into animals with a wave of her wand. Circe's reputation as a formidable and capricious witch preceded her, and the Argonauts approached her island with caution. They knew that their encounter with Circe could either aid or hinder their quest, depending on her mood and intentions. Circe was not only an enchantress, but she was also the brother of King Aetes and Medea's aunt. Medea's requested Circe to purify them of their sin. Circe, unaware of the true nature of their crime, agreed to her request. Having been cleansed, the Argonauts sailed onwards towards Iolcus. However, before they could reach their destination, they faced another perilous trial, the enchanting and deadly sirens. The sirens were mythical creatures, part woman and part fish, known for their irresistible songs that lured sailors to their doom. Their melodious voices were said to be so captivating that even the most experienced mariners could not resist the temptation to sail closer to the source of the music, often resulting in shipwrecks on the jagged rocks that surrounded the siren's island. As the Argo approached the island of the Sirens, the heroes knew they had to take precautions to avoid the fate that had befallen countless sailors before them. Orpheus, the gifted musician and member of the Argonauts, played a pivotal role in this encounter. With his lyre in hand, he began to play a counter-melody that rivaled the Siren's song. Orpheus's music was so beautiful and enchanting that it not only drowned out the Siren's voices, but also soothed the fears and desires of the crew. The Argonauts, despite being drawn to the Siren's Island by curiosity and temptation, found themselves immune to the deadly allure, thanks to Orpheus's divine gift. The Sirens, frustrated by their failure to ensnare the heroes, sang a mournful lament as the Argos sailed to their next destination. Following their harrowing encounter with the Sirens, the Argonauts found themselves navigating the perilous Straits of Messina, a treacherous stretch of water that posed a deadly dilemma. On one side of the straits lurked Scylla, once a maiden, but now a creature with twelve feet and six heads, serpentine necks and shark-like teeth, and on the other side was Charybdis, a monster with the ability to create massive whirlpool capable of swallowing entire ships. To pass through this narrow channel, the heroes had to make a difficult choice. Risk losing some of their crew to Scylla's, 
or risk the entire ship being sucked into the abyss by Charybdis. Jason, as the leader of the Argonauts, faced the unenviable decision of choosing the lesser of two evils. He knew that no matter what choice he made, there would be sacrifices and losses. It was then that Hera ordered the goddess Thetis and the Nereids to help guide Jason's ship to safety. The Argo was eventually led to the island of Drapane, where Jason and Medea decided to get married. Eventually, from their union, Medea would give birth to two sons, Mermeris and Ferris. Both of their children were destined for a tragic fate. The next challenge that awaited the Argonauts on their perilous voyage homeward was the formidable guardian of the island of Crete, Talos. This massive and menacing figure was no ordinary adversary. He was a giant bronze automaton created by Hephaestus, the god of blacksmiths and craftsmen, and given life by Zeus. Talos stood as a colossal sentinel guarding the shores of Crete from intruders. His body was crafted entirely of bronze, making him impervious to conventional weapons, and he possessed incredible strength and agility. His most lethal feature was a single vulnerable vein in his ankle, which was the only weakness in his otherwise invulnerable form. As the Argo approached the shores of Crete, Talos came into view, a towering figure that cast a shadow over the entire island. The Guardian was aware of the intruder's presence and immediately set out to defend the land entrusted to his protection. In the face of such an overwhelming adversary, the Argonauts needed a cunning plan to overcome Talos. Medea, with her knowledge of magic and enchantments, played a crucial role in devising their strategy. She knew of the Guardian's Achilles heel and shared this vital information with the crew. The Argonauts lured Talos away from the shoreline, enticing him to chase them. As the giant pursued them, he stumbled and tripped, falling to the ground. At this moment, the heroes seized their opportunity. Medea casted a spell and launched a giant boulder at Talos's ankle, striking the only vein in his body. With a deafening roar, Talos crumbled to the ground, defeated. His life force ebbed away, and the once mighty guardian of Crete was reduced to a lifeless heap of bronze. The Argonauts had triumphed over one of their most formidable foes, and the island of Crete lay open before them albeit with a solemn reminder of the perils they faced on their epic voyage. Upon their return to Iolcus, the Argonauts presented the coveted Golden Fleece, a symbol of their epic journey and their valor, to Peleus. The sight of this magnificent prize, however, did not quell Peleus' envy and paranoia. Fearing that Jason might seek revenge or claim his rightful throne, Peleus concocted a nefarious plan to rid himself of the hero once and for all. Peleus feigned hospitality and invited Jason to a banquet in his honor. There he lured the hero into a deadly trap. He presented Jason with a challenge that seemed innocuous on the surface but concealed a sinister intent. He asked Jason to retrieve an object from a cauldron. Unbeknownst to Jason, this cauldron contained boiling water and Peleus expected him to be scalded to death. However, the gods would not allow their hero to meet such a cruel fate. Medea, who had accompanied Jason on his journey and had fallen deeply in love with him, intervened with her knowledge of magic. She performed a powerful enchantment that protected Jason from the searing heat of the water, allowing him to emerge unscathed. Jason's miraculous survival further stoked Pelias' fears, but he remained undeterred. He continued to plot against the hero. He sought the help of his daughters, the Pelian princesses, to deceive and betray Jason. The tragedy culminated in a heart-wrenching and fateful conclusion. Medea, whose love for Jason knew no bounds, hatched a plan to assist him once more. She approached Pelias' daughters and offered to restore their father's youth and vitality using her potent magic. In a misguided act of desperation or perhaps under the influence of Medea's enchantments, the princesses agreed to her proposal. Medea said she could give the youth back to anyone by cutting them up and boiling them. The daughters believed her after seeing a demonstration where an old ram was brought back as a young ram. Excited, they cut their father to pieces and threw him in a pot. Of course, Peleus did not come back to life. Peleus met a tragic end, and his daughters were left grief-stricken and horrified by the consequences of their actions. Acastus, Peleus' son, became king and naturally exiled Jason and Medea from the island. In the ancient city of Corinth, where love and ambition danced like shadows, the great hero Jason and the sorceress Medea arrived. 
their names whispered in awe and fear across the land. Their tale began with a love so fierce it could conquer monsters, a love forged in the crucible of adventure and danger. Jason, the valiant adventurer who had once captured the coveted Golden Fleece, sought refuge in Corinth after his epic quest. He had earned the admiration of gods and mortals alike. His ship, the Argo, had sailed through treacherous waters and braved the wrath of divine beings. But little did he know that the greatest challenge of his life lay not in the jaws of monsters or the clutches of gods, but in the human heart. In Corinth, a city of opulent palaces and bustling streets, Jason's heroic deeds and magnetic presence drew the attention of King Creon. Creon's daughter, Creusa, a radiant beauty with a heart as pure as the morning dew, captured Jason's gaze in his heart. Love bloomed between them like the sweetest of flowers, but little did they know that this budding romance would unleash a torrent of jealousy and fury. Medea, the enchantress who had stood by Jason's side through trials that would have shattered lesser souls, felt her heart splinter as she watched her beloved hero's affections drift away. Consumed by a fiery rage that rivaled the breath of dragons, she confronted Jason, demanding answers for his betrayal. But Jason, driven by his newfound love for Crusa, turned a deaf ear to Medea's anguish. He ignored her cries, leaving her to grapple with the agony of a love betrayed. Little did he realize the tempest he had awakened in the heart of a sorceress scorned. In the dark recesses of her mind, Medea devised a revenge as wicked as any curse. She crafted a coronet of dazzling allure and a gown of exquisite beauty, concealing within them the venomous seeds of her vengeance. With a smile that concealed her malevolence, she gifted these treacherous garments to Creusa. As Creusa adorned herself in these ill-fated fineries, a cruel fate unfolded. The coronet clung to her brow like a serpent's kiss, and the gown embraced her in its deadly embrace. Fierce flames, as if summoned from the depths of Tartarus, enveloped her in a tormenting inferno. King Creon, in a desperate attempt to save his beloved daughter, rushed to her aid, but he too was consumed by the merciless fire. The palace of Corinth became a pyre of tragedy, and the city wept for its fallen rulers. But Medea's thirst for vengeance was far from quenched. She turned her malevolent gaze toward the innocent son she had borne Jason, Mermeris, and Ferris. Whether out of fear that Jason might seek vengeance, or a desire to inflict the deepest wounds upon him, Medea's heart had turned to ice. She committed the unthinkable, extinguishing the lives of her own flesh and blood. With her unspeakable deeds complete, Medea abandoned Corinth, soaring through the heavens towards the city of Athens on a serpent-drawn chariot gifted by her grandfather, the sun god Helios. Her path was one of darkness and despair, leaving behind a city scarred by tragedy and a hero broken by his own choices. In the wake of the inferno that had engulfed Corinth, Jason stood amidst the ashes of his once promising future. The hero who had sailed to the edge of the world and conquered mythical beasts now faced a harsher adversary, the consequences of his own unfaithfulness. Consumed by remorse, he could not bear the burden of his actions. The hero who had once been the embodiment of courage and valor found himself haunted by the ghosts of his past. Jason was but a shadow of the mighty captain he had once been. The favor of Hera, once his staunch ally had waned, her divine protection withdrawn as punishment for breaking his vows to Medea. Jason's final chapters were marked by solitude and desolation. The hero who had sailed with a band of legendary Argonauts and stolen the golden fleece from a dragon's lair had become a solitary figure, adrift in the currents of his own regret. And so, on a fateful night as the stars above shimmered with indifferent brilliance, Jason sought solace beneath the stern of his once glorious ship, the Argo. This vessel, which had borne witness to his triumphs and trials, had become a symbol of his fated glory. In a twist of cruel irony, fate dealt the hero a final, ignoble blow. A rotting beam, weakened by the passage of time and neglect, succumbed to gravity's inexorable pull. It fell without warning, crashing down upon Jason as he lay in restless slumber. The hero who had defied gods and monsters met his end in the most unheroic of ways, crushed into oblivion beneath the decaying timbers of his past. And thus, the tale of Jason, the Argonaut who dared the impossible, came to a somber close. His name would forever be etched in the annals of both glory and tragedy, a reminder that even the mightiest heroes are not immune to the pitfalls of mortal frailty.